Hey everyone, this is a quick video showing you how to configure your Multi Plus inverter charger. Here we show that we have an Ethernet cable in the VE bus connection of the inverter, and the other end of that going to our MK3 USB interface, which is plugged into the USB port of our computer here. Once you have everything connected, you can launch Victron Connect on your device. It will search the VE bus looking for smart devices and your MultiPlus should show up in the list. Once you click on your device, it'll open up an information screen that just gives you a bit of information about what's going on. In this case, the inverter is turned on and inverting. By the way, the inverter must be turned on using 12 volt power for this configuration to work. The very first thing you should do is use the little gear icon in the very top right to open up the settings and it will tell you that the settings are disabled and you need a password to unlock them. The password is ZZZ. Once you get into the settings, the first thing you can take a look at is the firmware by clicking on the three dot menu and choosing product info. This will show you the version of the firmware that you're using and give you the ability to update if you're not on the latest. Here we are back at the settings screen, which is divided into five different sections and also has a button for help and manuals. I'm gonna go through all of these screens and show you the settings that I typically adjust. I would encourage you to take a look at the VE bus configuration guide PDF that we have linked to in our blog post at vanlifeoutfitters.com slash multiplus hyphen setup. Let's take a look at the general settings. Here you can change the system frequency between 50 or 60 Hertz. 60 Hertz is what we use in North America you can also make sure that the remote control is in charge of the current limit. This allows you to easily dial up or down this setting from the remote control so that you don't trip a breaker on your shore power connection. For instance, you could set this value to 15 amps if you're going to be plugged into a normal household style outlet at a friend's house or in a driveway. If you're at a campground and your shore power inlet is wired for 30 amps, you could increase this setting up to 30. The MultiPlus 3000 can use up to 50 amps of shore power slash utility power, but most vans top out with a 30 amp shore power connection. The next group of settings is called grid, and I typically leave all of these in their default state. If you're using a generator, you'll want to turn off the UPS function. The next group of settings is the inverter settings. Again, I tend to leave these in their default state. Toward the bottom there is the ability to turn on the AES, or Automatic Energy Saver. This setting reduces the amount of energy the inverter charger uses when it's idle. Typically the 3000 MultiPlus uses about 15 watts of electricity even when it's doing nothing. So this setting can reduce this consumption at idle, but it tends to cause problems with some appliances and electronics, and I generally keep it turned off, and I just remember to turn the inverter itself off completely, unless I'm using it. Next, we'll take a look at the charger settings. The unit ship's configured to charge AGM type batteries. If you're using lithium batteries, you'll want to start by turning on that option in this screen. When you do so, a bunch of other settings get changed to match that type of battery charging, including the float and absorption voltage to 13.5 and 14.2 respectively. If you're using Battleborne batteries, they recommend 13.6 for the float voltage and 14.4 for the absorption voltage. The charge current on this MultiPlus 3000 is set to 90 amps by default. Lithium batteries have a recommended charge current. For instance, Battleborn recommends 50 amps per 100 amp hour of battery. So, if you have two of them, you could set the charge current to 100 amps. If you have three or more, you can push it all the way to the maximum of this charger unit, which is 120 amps. You'll also want to set the absorption time. If you're using a Battleborn battery, they recommend 30 minutes of absorption time per 100 amp hours of battery storage. This setting doesn't allow for half hour increments, so if you have an odd number like three batteries, 
you can set this to two hours. During this time, the charge voltage is a constant and the BMS inside your battery will be trying to balance out each individual cell during the absorption stage. The last screen of settings is the AC input control and I don't typically change any of those settings. We hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out our blog post about this topic at vanlifeoutfitters.com slash multiplus hyphen setup.